Welcome everybody to the House of Destiny. We are so excited this week because we have a new segment. Yes. Normally we're doing current events or other things and uh, none of that's going away. But we have got a new segment called House of Destiny Conversations, which is in honor of when my dad yeah. used to do conversations. And this week we have a fantastic interview for you. If you are stressed out about what's going on in America, in the world and elections, we have Senator Mike Krotz of Georgia, who is a long, long time supporter. He and his beautiful wife, Phyllis, have supported our ministry for many, many years. They are dear friends of our family. Yes. And there is an incredible testimony there too, um, where Senator Mike Krotz actually died for, I believe, more, more than 30 minutes. He said 34 minutes. minutes. Yes. Uh, uh, he, and my father had prophesied over his wife, Phyllis, um, prior to, uh, promised them that they would have a child yes. and they had not yet had the child and he was uh, the sitting senator there in Georgia and had a heart attack. Yes. Passed away for 30 minutes and Phyllis took my father's prophecy in there and reminded God over Senator Krotz as he had died there in the hospital of his promise and he came back to life. God brought him back for a purpose and um, so he is going to be joining us shortly for an interview and uh, we are so excited. So stay tuned, you're gonna have more of these House of Destiny conversations as they become available. We're so excited for this new, this, this, uh, new thing that we're doing and uh, we know it's gonna be great and we know you're gonna love to hear what Senator Mike Krotz has to say. So let's go to that interview now. Welcome everybody to this special interview. We have a super special guest today with us, someone who is a, a dear friend of our family. We have a lot of history with and also happens to have been the Senator of Georgia, Senator Mike, Cr Mike Krotz. And we are so honored to have you with us today and joining us for this interview because we have so many questions and, um, you know, we trust you and we know that you can give us some insight and maybe answer some questions that we and and um, everyone here at the House of Destiny has, has had on our minds and hearts. Um, but I think maybe mom, uh, can you uh, share a little bit, um, you and Senator Cross about the history because I was a little young when some of the things happened. So just so people know our, our history and how close we are and why and what a miracle it is. Yes, Senator Crotz and Phyllis have been dear, dear friends of ours for many years. And uh, Senator Crotz actually had a heart attack way back. Uh, I can't remember the actual year now, Senator Crotz, but uh, you, he had a heart attack and uh, he died for, I think it was 40 something minutes. And 38 or 40 minutes. How long, Senator? 34. 34 minutes. I mean, can you imagine being dead for 34 minutes and uh, moving to the next realm and Lord have mercy. Our, <laughs> it must be the most amazing, amazing experience. Um, but you're going to hear a little bit from him today about what's going on in the country because he's come through so much in his life and being a senator, he knows the political climate, what's happening in the world uh, from that standpoint and also from the spiritual standpoint because Senator Kratz and Phyllis are Christians and have been uh, Christians for many, many years. So, uh, Christy, do you have anything you'd like to say? Before we <laughs> well, of course. Um, firstly, we're so thankful that you're with us, Senator Kratz. We're really, really thankful. And um, obviously, with everything going on, the political climate, what it is, it's just really a privilege to be able to get somebody, somebody's insight like yours, uh, where you have the insight that I think and the perspective that a lot of us would like but don't have. And so I know that we're, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to talk about, but if, if I may, I, there's there's a question that I really had, had wanted to ask you, um, which is what you see is happening practically here on out if it seems like the Democrats are actually going to control the House, the Senate and the presidency, like what you think that's going to look like on a practical level for the nation? 
Well, it's uh, of course, there's no question. And, and again, thank you so much for having me today. I, I, I'm thrilled to be here in such a relationship that I've had with this family over the years and with Kim and Jane and Donna. Uh, so, but, but yes, we, you know, we have a lot of things that are going on right now. It's changing minute by minute. And, um, I'm really not sure, you know, all eyes were on Georgia here uh, with this Senate race that took place last yeah. week mm-hmm. and um, a week before last. Now time goes by so fast, but um, I'm not sure that the president-elect would not have been better off if at least one of those senators had won uh, because it's going to make him very, very difficult now for him to deal with the extreme radical left uh, because they're going to be pushing on him so hard to do things that they want to see changed. Uh, and I can't tell you how critical things really are because of our Constitution. Uh, what could happen here if the, if, if the church, the, and I'm speaking of the church universal, if they really don't get in, engaged here and, and get outside of their walls of the church and, and really see what's at stake about our nation, um, they can make the changes. Uh, I said years and years ago that if we did not engage, that we were going to see situations where governments and local governments, uh, state governments, was going to limit the size of congregations because they understood the power in the body of Christ nationwide and around the world of being able to make things happen because of the, the size of the church. And so you see that happening today, uh, you know, uh, even in California and other states, uh, not, not necessarily because of the COVID virus, but just the fact that it's an opportunity that the extreme left not being spiritual uh, to the degree that they need to understand uh, that they're trying to push the issue to, to suppress us. Uh, I've had numbers of communication uh, with other senators, other House members. And uh, fortunately, I think that over the next two years, depending on what we do have to face and what comes up, is that we're going to have, uh, we'll have individuals that will be in Democratic seats and districts that they're in uh, within their states. Um, they're not going to be able to vote on some of the things that this radical left socialism uh, type of legislation is going to present. And so it's going to be very, very difficult for them to be able to uh, vote on some of those issues because they're going to have to run their campaigns in two years. So that's one thing. But one of the things that I see that can be very instrumental is that the Christian population, not just the Christians, but everyone that, that cares about this country and loves this country it's patriots that are Christians. Um, they need to stay on the telephone. They need to stay after these individuals. They need to call the senators, calls, put calls into the White House, and let your voice be heard because that is the only way that we're going to be able to do things. But ultimately, we've all got to pray. Uh, that is the answer, uh, is the prayer. Uh, because there's no doubt in my mind that what we're seeing evolve is for the lifeblood of this nation and the Constitution as we've known it. Uh, if we don't, then we're going to lose the country. Uh, I don't believe the Lord ever meant that to be because I think America, as America goes, the world goes. And so consequently, uh, what we do and what our actions uh, uh, and the path that they take are very, very instrumental in, in how this country will move forward from today forward. I have, I have a question. Um, my main, um, my main thing has been this, um, the election fraud. And I watched all of the hearings from beginning to end. Every person testify. I've watched the whole thing and it did look fraudulent to me. And um, uh, as, as an observer from outside, obviously not knowing. So in, in your position and in your time, have you ever witnessed anything like that? And do you believe that there was that level of fraud? 
Well, of course, you know, the media will tell you, of course, there was no doubt the, the fake news, and, and it is. Um, it is. It's one-sided. Uh, it always has been for as long as I've been involved. But we're, we're, in, we're in a time where the issues that are at hand, um, when you see an, an issue on TV, for example, and they're, you know, they, they, they'll give you the, the side of it, but when you look at it, it's really not. It's just like the fraud you're asking about. There is no doubt in my mind that the ballots were, they were fake ballots. Uh, they were, uh, there were issues that, uh, that came up in these various states, especially contested states, where there were ballots that showed up at three or four o'clock in the morning, in the morning. Um, you know, I, I, to me, you ought to have an election on the day and when the polls close, you count the votes and you're done this, putting them aside for two or three days or waiting a week before you get your totals. It just smacks, for fraud, it just opens the door for that, and so um, I, I happen to have been involved a week before last, um, and I was in a meeting. Uh, there were was a group of people there, and they know that there are certifications that have been that have come out of Italy. Now you may have heard some of this. I have. But this, I mean, we're talking James Bond things yeah. here. Yes. I mean, really. Yes. I mean, but but it, it has turned out through investigation and through what had happened. When year, years back, when Obama sent the money, the pallets of money to Iran, some of that money ended its way, making its way over into Italy. And the the. If you may have seen in the media recently, uh, the president or the uh, prime minister or president of uh, Italy was arrested. Yes. And, and there's the, the another gentleman that's there is the one that like our AT&T here. He has the satellite networks in that part of the world. It turned out that those satellites were leased to the Vatican. And the Vatican, they were not spy satellites, but they were uh, communication satellites. And what was happening is that there was an IT engineer that was uploading the information to those satellites that was sending it to Germany. And Germany was sending it over here, which was manipulating the votes. That's why when some of the media, when you were watching that in in the blink of an eye, the votes changed. Right. Didn't it, 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 you, it, it, you, you never saw it. You didn't see it happen. It's just that it, it just happened. And so that's, that was the procedure and the process. Now, the affidavits that came out, they made, uh, the, and when I say James Bond, there were, there were people in the underground movement that were in Italy trying to get these people out so that they could come back here and testify. Uh, they did get the, the affidavits and, the, and certifications back here, and that has been distributed back to uh, President Trump and also some of the members uh, in uh, Congress. So where that's going at this point, I can't tell you. I don't know uh, what's going to happen there, but I have no doubt in my mind that there were, there were ballots that were issued that came down um, that were printed during that time when everything was shut down at three or four o'clock in the morning. Um, but everything you hear on the media and that said is that, you know, all the avenues that the president took, everything that he went through, uh, nothing, nothing came of it because there was, they said there was nothing there. So, um, but I beg to differ. Because I, I believe that there is. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that there is, too. And that's because I did sit there and watch and watch and watch all of those hearings where, 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 where they were going to where the, when they were in Georgia, when they were in Arizona, when they were in Michigan. And, and what 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 stood out to me, too, is the fact that my dad ministered and traveled in these particular states and prophesied over these regions for years and years. I, said, I, was, I know. 
And there were these certain sort of more long-term things he was seeing that he kept repeating, things like death to debt, which we haven't seen yet. So we know that's a promise coming. Um, and so I just, I, I mean, w even today, um, I do a, a weekly, in case you didn't know this, I do, I do a weekly um, broadcast of footage of my dad. And I found some incredible uh, prophecies, especially this week. Um, and we put that up every Monday on Prophetic Rewind, which is, which is the channel that we do that from. And um, he was prophesying blackouts. Uh, he was seeing and as the, he, what, what he called a most strange infiltration uh, uh, via New York, particularly because he was going to New York, but in other regions too. And he was talking about um, uh, it would be nothing like 9-11 and that the enemy of America that we needed to be more afraid of, not afraid of, but more wary of, is the enemies of America living in America. And so he saw an infiltration and he said, they'll terrorize you and even black you out. Right. And uh, we actually had a problem getting that onto our page, our Facebook page today, because the censorship has become so heavy. And, <laughs> but it was very important to me and I'll send you the prophecy uh, so you can see it. Cause I was just editing it last night. It, it, it's so right on. And then I look at dad's whole life and understanding the period of when he was born, when he died, what he witnessed in his life as a culmination to the moment we're in right now. And so, um, so many of these things are sort of interwoven in what he was seeing and God was showing him, but those are promises. And I, and I still feel that no matter what we're seeing around us, as you know, my dad would always say, you don't look at your present circumstances, you've got to look to the future and keep your eye on that promise, that yes. we have promises yet to be fulfilled and in where we are now it everything appears to not be going that way and people are becoming fearful and so um you know that's one thing that i just want to keep reminding people um is that this isn't over yet and that, that, that we can't even trust in, in a president that i think that at this time the only thing we can trust in is god to get us through this and understand that sometimes we have to go through things in order for it to be done right. And so um, there's so much confusion, though, and so much, uh, uh, especially for conservatives, a desperation for where do we get information? Because now even Fox News, we can't trust Fox News right now. Right. Even, not completely. So um, that, that's been such a struggle is, is this, where do we get our information? Where do we get our information? And so... What, we're, what we've been doing is releasing more and more prophecies and prophecies and prophecies because my dad was so right on all the way. Uh, he even, we've recently found a prophecy where he said, you'll say we have two presidents. What do we do now? And it seems to be what we're in. When has that happened before? And you, yes, so, um, there's this, this, the position we're in where we understand the prophetic here at the house of destiny because and so do you, because of all the years with my dad. And then you look at his life and everything he prophesied, that it couldn't possibly end with the end of America. And I remember my dad saying, I didn't prophesy all these years for this to end up in, all, uh, in a big mess. God has shown me something. This is a promise. So however it plays out, um, you know, we have to just go with that but, um, and trust God first. And uh, that can be difficult because we have this desire to control the situation or to try to do something. And um, uh, I know there's a lot of Christians feeling frustrated that we're praying and it still seems like nothing's happening. And I remember my dad saying a veil has been placed upon this nation. <laughs> he prophesied this February of 2014. A veil has been placed upon this nation and I did it. God saying I did it so that for a season, um, my people would wander because in darkness, faith grows in despair, faith grows. And I feel like that we are in a situation right now where our faith is needed more than ever. I think faith being the thing in God first, not even Trump, not even a political, especially not a political party. My dad saw the rise of a new party. And, and this is what I'm seeing people saying everywhere is we're, we're tired of this. We're tired of this. We want something new and God is going to do something new and great. And so um, I've just, 
you know, I just thought today interviewing you, especially you knowing my dad and being a senator, um, that it would be just so good for the people to just feel encouraged that, um, first of all, not all politicians are dishonest and bad. You're a good one. And, um, and that we need to pray for more righteous leaders. And, uh, and I think that there's an education process, too, with people that, you know, we kind of forgot about how it all works or don't know about how it all works because all of us are busy with our lives. But now the eyes of America on both, on both sides, on all sides, are focused on how this system works and the Constitution and what it means and the value of America as that shining light. Because, I mean, I saw my parents go through what they had to do to legally immigrate here and what it meant for them. And the vote and how when they lived in South Africa, um, and mom, you could probably speak more to this than me, obviously, but when they lived in South Africa, they didn't bother to vote because they knew it didn't count. And this is how a lot of Americans are feeling now. You're seeing that there, we saw fraud happen in front of our eyes. And if nothing's done about it, will our vote count? And I, I, I sort of fear that that is sort of what happened with the, with, with the runoff uh, in, in the Georgia Senate runoff there. Well, that's, that's exactly why people have got to get engaged. They can't just sit on the sidelines and not, not see what's happening here. Um, we're, we're, it's so critical right now. We're really talking about a spiritual battle here. There's no doubt, just Ed has been prophesied. Uh, I think about the prophecy that he did in 2014 uh, when he talked about a two-week period in this election right now, this two-week period that we're in today. And there are a lot of things that I cannot share even now because I don't have a clear uh, feel for it yet of of some of the information that I'm getting. Um, the only thing I can say is we got to pray because there are a lot of things in this next 10 days or two week period that can really still unfold that uh, could change everything. Yes. So what happened uh, at the Capitol the other day uh, was tragic. It's sad that lives were lost. It's sad. But the media has made that into something much larger than it really was because of the characters that were involved in that. And the president knew it. He knew those people were going to be there. And it, it's part of the uh, part of what happened was that when in were part uh, when they see the photographs of them. These are people that were in California and Portland and other parts of the country when all these other riots were going on through the summer. So they know they were placed there yes. uh, to create the turmoil. Yes. But the is, is that where where the president was smart enough that they in, infiltrated some of the Secret Service people and others in that group. And that's how they were able to get about 25 of the laptops out of the Capitol that has got information that I think is going to be instrumental in some of the changes that could have happened or could occur. I'm wondering if um, I'm wondering if anyone's going to take notice of what what was of all of this evidence that's been uncovered. I mean, uh, they're blocking everything so that uh, nothing is heard. Um, our free speech is being blocked, or our communications are being blocked, and and um, this is this is going to be quite something to see if. Uh, justice actually comes to the fore if people are actually prosecuted for what they've done. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. Well, I, of course, there's no doubt in my mind, Jane, that this is this is uh, darkness against the light. I mean, it's a clear battle. And, of course, I know that the Lord's greater because he's a big God and the devil's a little, little bitty man. And so we know that, that the God's going to prevail. And, and I believe with all of my heart as a patriot and as a Christian that um, and what my beliefs are in the Constitution, uh, I really and truly believe that America is, is a jewel in God's eye. Yes. And, and I, I just cannot see that he's going to allow this whole thing to be put down 
uh, and when I started this conversation and I said about the church engaging, uh, Kim understood that. He, that's what he talked about when he was in the regions that uh, Don A was speaking about. Um, we, if, if we're going to, to make sure that we do that, the president did away with the, uh, he repealed the Johnson Amendment, which allowed pastors and churches to, to speak from the pulpit about politics. Exactly. Um, and so pastors have got to realize that they cannot hide behind the pulpit worried about where their little pittance of IRS comes from or right. their money from IRS or are exempt from from IRS because IRS is not their source. No. So, so they've got to speak out. Um, this is not a Republican Democrat issue. Uh, Republicans are not right on everything and Democrats aren't either. I, I can recall times when we'd leave the floor of the Senate to caucus on legislation and some of my my colleagues would say, well, we can't support this. And I'd say, but why? It's good for the state. It's good for the nation. Why Why would you be opposed to it? Well, we don't want the other side to get credit for this. We want to be able to amend it, do these things to use against them in an election. And I said, listen, you want to know why the public is, is, has bad attitude towards you this is why yes. you know we're sent here to do and represent the people not a party not a not all these game plays that you're doing so we're not right on every issue they're not either but on this issue it's good it's good for the nation it's good for your state and when we go back on the floor i'm gonna vote with them well you're not a team player you're not on the team and i said yes i'm on the team i'm on the people's team I'm on the team that sent me here, and that's what you need to do. And if we could ever come to, to those kind of agreements and quit worried about how you're going to trap somebody or get them caught up in something that you can use in a campaign against them, then we can change this nation and we can do what our forefathers meant through the Constitution instead of trying to make it uh, like the, the, the extreme left wants to make it a living document that they can change as they want it to, to suit whatever their needs might be at the time. It won't work. That's not America. That's why America has, has been able to survive these hundreds of years because of that document. And we don't need to be, you know, manipulating it and fixing it. So it'll work for this one or that one or whatever. And the freedom of speech is the number one. And the, absolutely. The, the signers of that document understood what the speech, how important it was, and to be able to do that. Do I like somebody burning the flag? Do I like somebody talking about certain issues? No, but but that Constitution gives them the right to do it. And so being a patriot and believing in that document, then I, I will support them. I might not, and I might have to work hard to try to change it, but they have a right to at least say it. And that's what's unique about America. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that is the number one issue that is uh, they're trying to take away by uh, these big tech companies not being put in place, uh, being set right by the the, um, the Congress and the Senate. They need to they need to do something about these big tech companies right. that are trying to control our, control our speech. Do you, do you remember, you know, they, they split Microsoft down. Do you remember that? Because yes. They, well, you know, you've got these these tech companies now, the, especially the top three. Uh, they're like governments unto themselves as far as the the, the size of their their value and the yeah. amount. They have. So, um, it, it I think we're at that point where that really needs to be addressed. But first and foremost, we have got to. This is why the church has got to get involved about this fraud in the elections. If we don't fix it now. Never. There'll never be another fair election ever. And I know the president today understands that. Uh, I'm not sure he's really thrown everything in, in the ring and saying, OK, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Because I, uh, he understands the Constitution. He understands, you know, what we need to do. And so uh, there still could be something that could occur in what this two week period that your dad prophesied over in 2014 that could still unfold here. Okay. And you remember when he was there and he held up and he said, and there's a stone. Do you remember that? 
Yes. I tell you, I don't see that we're done. No. no. So Christians just need to pray. We need to really, really pray and and ask the Lord to intervene and uh, engage yourself. Don't don't just sit by and say, well, somebody else will take care of it. They won't. They won't. I, I have I have one one more question I wanted to ask you. I know we've been going for a little while now, but I do have a question about the Insurrection Act. Um, do you know what that? Uh, can you explain it? Because um, I keep hearing, well, he's tell President Trump he must sign the Insurrection Act. Um, I heard he did, but I'm not sure if it's true. And so I was wondering if you know what that is or anything about that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what he has done. There's also been some talk that has uh, uh, about martial law. You know, you hear that out there. I, whether he's going to do that or not, I don't know. I don't know if he intends to do that. But um, the fact is that he signed that back in November uh, over the border issue. So it's still in place. Um, and so he's he's in, in a, a situation right now that he, he's – trying to, I think, be able to pull back some of the things that he tried to do through the courts. Uh, to me, under the Constitution, it's a shame that the Supreme Court would not even hear the case, not even listen to it. I think, th- I think they had a moral obligation to this nation to at least hear it, whether they ruled on it or not. However, I think you're looking at a situation that with some of the things that may come forth here in this two week period that you may find out the reason that that didn't happen is because there is so much corruption within our government and not just our government, it, it's around the world. Um, it's, you know, um, and there, there, there are things that are going to surprise and shock people when some of this stuff really comes to light. Um, but I have to say, to Christians and patriots when some of this stuff does come up and some of the things start happening, because you mentioned fear, fear is not of God. The enemy wants you to be afraid. He wants to instill so much fear in you that you'll back away and just, you know, and, and then he gets what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, what, what we've got to do is just be calm when some of these things start opening up and showing, we need to be calm. We need to let things work their path and don't become discouraged. Right. Because, and just remember that God is in control. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've got to we've got to to do that and and be strong uh, and not allow this this other side to take these radical ideas and destroy our country. Definitely. And, you know, my dad, uh, you'll probably remember this, too. He prophesied that back then in 2014 as well. He said two from the Supreme Court would step down from the embarrassment of what would happen. Right. And many people, you know, because Trump had three, three justices that he appointed during his, his term, his first term here. Uh, a lot of people thought that was what, you know, they kind of tried to think that, you know, we, we all wondered. But I kept going back to what did he say? Because when my dad was prophesying, he was a a voice for God. And God was saying, uh, two will step down, not resign, not pass away from embarrassment. And so when, as we're talking about this two week period and, and more and more stuff being exposed, and then you see that the Supreme Court wouldn't even hear it. Who would it have hurt if they just heard it? Any of these courts. It's their responsibility to hear it. And the, and the fact that they wouldn't it, uh, causes concern, um, you know, for, for many Americans who, who just wanted to be heard and feel like they're not being. And I think we're, we're, we're at a point where the enemy is, uh, you know, they think they, the enemy thinks he's one. I'm not going to say they because people are easily influenced. People have lives. I, I, I don't like the division between parties and the partisan that's a divide and conquer kind of thing to me. It seems like we shouldn't be, um, seems like it's obvious, we shouldn't be fighting each other so harshly that we can't even speak to each other anymore. And so, um, you know, that, that, that 
uh, that I just feel like that we're in the middle of of it and it, there's, it, it's not over. And I just want to keep telling people that and reminding them it is not over. And God sometimes, you know, the way he works is mysterious. And as my dad used to say, um, he likes to show up and show off. That's it. And, and uh, one, of, one of the, I mean, the main focus of that day in 2014 was the removal of corruption from our government and God's dissatisfaction with both parties. And so I keep trying to encourage people because we get so angry with the, with the other side, with the lift. But we have to remember that those people are, are blinded by the enemy and deceived but they're still God's children and we shouldn't be fighting them, but rather find some way to reach one another and communicate and forgive and love one another. Um, and, and, and bring them, bring those who are lost as many as we can to try to open their eyes in a, in, in a Christian and loving way. I see so much anger, so much throwing out of scripture and it's, it's, it's everybody's angry. And I just keep trying to tell everybody they want us divided so we're distracted so they can get away with all the stuff that, that we're not paying attention to. And I feel that very strongly that that's the situation going on and has been, but it's just culminated now. So um, I don't know, Chrissy, uh, I haven't heard from you, but I know you have some thoughts on some of this. Yeah. I, I, um, obviously it's, you know, I think what uh, you said, Senator, is really helpful um, just because, you know, I kind of always think about it, although I'm pretty Bible focused, I, I kind of always think about what, what people can do practically. And I think that's also, you know, I'm part of this prayer group out here and there's like 15 of us in our chat. I mean, there's probably been a thousand messages going crazy on this chat in the last week. It's just a battery is dying. Like people are just asking, what can we do? What should we do after everything that happened in DC and how crazy things went? And, you know, the left says this and the right says this, and there's just so much chaos. Um, I think what you said was just really helpful for us as Christians practically. Like, of course, we continue to pray. We definitely don't throw the towel in now. Uh, but also, you know, calling senators and doing these different things to kind of maintain some type of pressure, because now is obviously not the time for us to stop holding the line, even though things don't necessarily look the way we wanted them to look. Um, but I know that we've been, we've had, we've taken up a fair amount of your time already, for which we are very thankful. Um, but I just, yeah, really appreciate kind of the practical um, side that you were able to to provide and obviously your perspective as well is just great because you've been there, you know, so thank you so much for, for all of that. Well, listen, I'm so, I'm glad just to be a part, but, uh, but you're right. You just cannot, you've got to engage. You know, when, when I died, uh, the spirit of the Lord showed me the, uh, the seven mountains and that I shared with uh, Dr. Lance Wallow. And of course he taught on that. And, um, so I, um, uh, I think that everybody has got a purpose in their life. Uh, Kim talked about that a lot. And what you've got to do is uh, no matter how insignificant you think that you might be, that you've got to engage in what your specialty is, because that's the only way that the church is going to be able to change our world and, and do what God meant. We're, listen, we're his mouthpiece. He, he, you know, he's he's interceding on our behalf on the throne uh, yeah. next to the Father. But but he but we are his mouthpiece here. He put us here to do things. And so if we remain silent, then we're giving in. We're allowing the enemy just to, to rule and reign. And uh, th that's not our purpose here. That's not what we were put here to do. So uh, how, however small you think you may be in, in your community or wherever, Engage, find out something that you like and know that you can make a difference. And then let people know that are in these offices, even from the school board all the way to the president of the United States, let them know how you feel. Phone calls make a difference. You can bet if I, if I receive 600 telephone calls, I'm, I'm, it gets my attention. So as little as you might think making a phone call is not going to matter, um, it does. It, it matters. So it's when you remain silent is when we get in trouble. So uh, fight the fight. You know, we, that's our purpose here. And that's what we've got to do. We have got to make America 
keep America in in uh, what what the Lord intended us to do. That was incredible. So much information from Senator Kreitz. And like he was saying, you need to contact your local officials and you need to make your voice known. Uh, it's really, really important. I didn't really realize how important that was. Like he said, when he was a senator, the more calls that came in, um, that's when he took notice. And so your voice can be made heard if you just pick up your telephone and call your local representatives mm -hmm. and make your voice heard. Because right now our voices are being... They're being silenced. Silenced, shut down, and these big tech companies are, they think they're God. They're just taking over the world, taking over our country, and we cannot let this happen. So you need to call and make your voice heard, and uh, we're going to do the same. Yes. Uh, we're definitely going we to are. take his advice because he knows being a senator and that must, that just that simple irritation of getting so many calls, well, I better do something about yeah, it. If you get 800 <laughs> calls in a day, it's, you're, you're going to get their attention. Yeah. And you know, will. you know, we um, as Christians and um, especially as Christians, but as Americans, uh, we don't want violence. And um, there's a lot of accusations about inciting of violence and all this. Violence is never the answer. And so I really want to make sure that that's, that's mm -hmm. clearly understood today. That when we are telling you to act and we're telling you to do something, we're telling you to do it in, um, in a way that uh, isn't questionable, or will make, uh, drive anger. What, there's a righteous anger, but there's also a, a righteous way of dealing with things. And I think that was a wonderful bit of, yeah. of advice for him yeah. to give us is that just don't stop and don't give up. Mm -hmm. And um, yep. uh, don't allow it to consume you. Don't allow yourself to become, and look, I'm guilty of this too, where I'm watching things and I'm seeing this hypocrisy and I'm seeing what's happening and I get so angry. And I'll say, I don't want to feel this angry. And that's when you have to pray and ask God to help you get through it, but don't do nothing either. Mm -hmm. Don't hide away and don't stay silent because uh, uh, dad, God showed dad, um, the rise of a Fourth Reich. Um, uh, he sent me to Auschwitz. He was so passionate about it. About it. And uh, what we see happening to the Christians and Jews appears to be the emergence of that. And so Definitely. as Christians, uh, right now, we are going to pray, mm -hmm. be praying against that yes. and for unity and for peace and for um, God's will in America and for the world. There's definitely a spiritual battle going on. Without question. I can just imagine in the heavenly realms how this warfare is going on between good and evil and and God's angels, his his multitudes of millions and millions of angels and and demons converging in in in, in the atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, this is a spiritual war. It is. We are praying as in a spiritual way. That means we pray. We don't use our fists. We use our prayer. That's our that is how we war in the spirit. And our faith. That's right. When we when we speak about take some action, that's what we mean. Take action on your knees. That's how we get. That's how we get things done. And pick your phone up. Exactly. Or and send then an email. Pick up your or phone. Go, to, and, go to the office. Those are the practical. You're allowed to do that. These are the practical yeah. practical uh, uh, things that we need to do when we say when it's not inciting violence. It's 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 right. uh, getting people to to pray on their knees. Exactly. Yeah. And speaking of that, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible because my nature is kind of militant when yes. things go crazy. <laughs> and uh, speaking of it with anger, you know, it's so easy to forget that we're all humans and that there's a spirit behind yes. everything that's going on. But there's a scripture that says that the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Mm. And so the other thing to remember is that there's only two things in all of scripture that God ever said don't touch about himself. The one was his glory and the other was vengeance. Of those two things, he said they're mine. Right. And so right now where we're probably frustrated and want to see what we would deem justice, we have to remember that the Holy One of Israel has not changed. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I spoke about on yesterday's Israel Update show is just kind of encouraging everybody that the Holy One of Israel has not changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, millennia have come and gone, kingdoms have risen and fallen, right. empires and emperors have risen and fallen, but the Holy One of Israel has not changed and He is still here, still on the throne and He's in control. Right. So we're gonna pray. 
and um, really trust in God that peace would be the portion that is released to you. So Father, I thank you that you are the Holy One of Israel and that you have not changed. And I pray right now that in the face of every bit of despair, of every bit of hopelessness, where your word speaks about how, you know, having hope deferred, it can make our hearts sick. Mm -hmm. Every person who's struggling, not knowing where to look, not knowing what to do, I pray that you would come in and every bit of fear, anxiety, anguish, hopelessness, Mm -hmm. despair, I pray that all of that would be removed and you would displace those things with Mm -hmm. your peace. We're asking Holy Spirit that you would come in like a rushing wind Mm -hmm. and blow out all of those other things, the emotions, the thoughts, all of it, and that you would come in and bring an establishing of your peace in every life, in every mind, in every home. We trust in you. Our trust is in Christ alone. It is upon him who we build our lives. He is the solid rock. He is the only one. And so God, I pray that in the midst of uncertainty and in the midst of not knowing what to do, we would look to you and remember that you, great King, the Holy One of Israel has not changed. And even in the midst of the division in the nation, thinking about the Hebrews and what they would pray from thousands of years ago, you, the Lord God of Israel, you are one Mm. and you are one and in you there is no division. And so I pray God that you would just help us to know how it is to fight forward, but also to not be fractured within ourselves, with our brothers and sisters, even those in the church who feel differently to us, because you are one and there is no division or fracture in you. So I pray that the same way that the Israelis for thousands of years have been singing that and praying it about how you, the Lord God of Israel, you are one. I pray that that is what our mandate would be. That is where our peace would come from. And we trust you for that in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Amen. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next week. What a great broadcast. We're so happy that you joined us. And we want you to know that we're here to pray with you. Write us at hope at houseofdestiny.org. We'll be sure to gather together, pray over your prayer request, and by all means, send in those wonderful testimonies so we can share those on the broadcast as well.